Hello and welcome to Chilly Bee Gaming. I'm Evie, and today we're back with some more Alone in the Dark as part of our Spooky Saturdays playlist. And last time we went to a sunken temple and found out the uh, the kind of rules of the contract that Jeremy has got with the Dark Man and how we can break that contract. So let's get into it. Ah, yes. Okay, so we need to go into Dr. Gray's office, which I think, if memory serves me, is up these stairs, and then if we get up a level, Dr. Gray's apartment, hmm, Dr. Gray's office, where is it though? Can we get in this way? This looks like it's blocked. Ah. Oh no, there you go. Dr. Gray's office, it is locked, but we can get in there, I think. So, through the reception and through the clerk's office. Brilliant. Right. So, through here? Through here. I wonder what we're going to find. Dr. Gray was a bit of a weird character to start with, wasn't he? So, through the clerk's office. Can we ring the bell again? There you go. Just for, just for the sake of it. There must be a spare key to Dr. Gray's office in here somewhere. I reckon it's going to be in that safe. But we need to figure out how to open the safe first, don't we? Hmm. Maybe in one of the drawers or something? Or is there any papers on the table? Maybe we can open this? I need the key. Hmm. No key there. Huh. Must be this then. There's nothing I don't else. I have a combination for this. Maybe Jeremy did. Hmm. I wonder if it'd be in our notes, Jeremy. Um, can we have a look at this? No. Uh, hmm. Ah, Jeremy's thoughts. Here we go. Uh, can we... Have a look here. Maybe... Can we view? Let's have a look. There is always three numbers. Yes, we know that bit. Talisman plates. Deranged. Hmm. Okay, well... Ah, what's this? Is it a lanyard? Yep, the Flying Dutchman. Lanyard. Okay. We are doing very well on the lanyards at this moment. Hmm. Can't open that. Hmm. Oh, that's annoying. <sighs> Maybe Jeremy did. Maybe Jeremy's room? Maybe there's something in there. We'll go and have a look. Just to see. Hopefully we'll find something. Wouldn't be this clock, would it? The clock? No. Never mind. So this was Jeremy's room, I think. Yep. What's this over here? To Detective Carnby. Detective Carnby, I'm terribly sorry that my niece has pulled you into this mess. Please, with all my blessings, take her away from this cursed place. I have destroyed that eater of worlds and locked it away in the attic and retreated to a place of hiding. Tell Emily I'm safe. Tell her all the lies you can think of to make her listen. Take her back to New Orleans. Sincerely, Jeremy. Hmm. Is there anything else on this? No. Ha! Ah. Maybe the attic? Maybe the attic. There'd be something in there. That might lead us to where we want to go. Here? What's this? 
Have we found something here? Is it another lanyard? Trust me. Brother, I need you to trust me. Ooh. This is the most important moment in our family's history. I know you have doubts and that the terrible Mama Loa told you lies. I would never betray you. I promise. Lottie. Curious. So, okay. What about Perosis? Is this Perosis room? Um, what about the other side? Was it like the little girl's room and the writer lady? Maybe? I mean, this seems a little far fetched, but okay. Oh! Detective Conby, good to see you again. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink, we pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? There is just something about tonight. Something is different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. Mm -hmm. You should come. <laughs> God damn it, Grace, stay put for once. Mm. I don't like that. That's bizarre. What's this? A key, hey! First floor hall key. Ooh. Brilliant. Better hold on to these. Wouldn't want them to get lost. No. That needs a key. What else? In here? Oh, this is the kids' room, isn't it? Anything else in here? Oh, yeah, look. Grace's drawings. Grace's drawings are a little weird. Okay, but looks like we've got to add something to it. Jack in the box and the land. Yeah, very good. Ooh. So we need to find a Gracie drawing. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. Something just seems weird, doesn't it? What's that weird, di weird dude's added? What's this? Movie script. Hey, Slaughter Gulch. Lovely. What's this? Cassandra's last page. Ooh. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long, but that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. Oh. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. There you go. Nine, one, three. Brilliant. Is there anything else in here? Oh, hello. Yeah, it's the, the bottles again. 913. Well, that gives us something to work with, I suppose. I wonder if there's anything else in here. Just sheer curiosity. No, looks like it's still just empty garbage. 913. Okay. I wonder what's in the globe thing there, just inside that door. And what's with these weird statues? So nine, one, three. So that's twelve, isn't it? So would it be left or right? So nine, one, three. It worked. Hey, brilliant! 
Dr. Gray's office key. Fab. Love it. Ha ha! Okay. Ooh, the, empty the last room. guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. I must write this down, because if I understand the condition sufficiently, it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new world view in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this worldview, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. Hmm. Very strange. Okay. So we can we can go in here now. Is that the office? No. Ah, is this the office? This must be the office here. Uh, yeah. Ah, we're in. Dr. Gray's office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. Mm. Yes, let's. Let's just see what we have in our objectives Dr. Here. Gray was somehow mixed up in this business with the dark man, Detective Conby decided. He had to be. Either Dr. Gray was using the idea of the dark man to manipulate and torture Jeremy, or the dark man was an actual powerful being possessing Jeremy. And in that case, Dr. Gray was simply a stooge. Maybe both could be true at once. Comby felt his mind racing in all directions. No matter what, he had to find a way to break the pact. That was what Jeremy said was needed. It didn't even matter what was true or not. If Jeremy wouldn't leave their settle before the contract was broken, then Comby had to make it happen. He just wished the steps on the contract made a little more sense. Mm. All right, well, let's have a good sniff around, shall we? As we've got the place to ourselves. What's this? Jeremy's treatment. Ooh, well. Dearest Dr. Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm, eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, 
but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. Hmm. Interesting. Stairwell key. We'll take it. Thank you. Stairwell key. What's that? McCaffrey's pirate treasure. This is where McCaffrey has hidden my favourite young. It's very important. All right, Grace. Fair enough. Cassandra's things. I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for, Mrs. Thompson. Hmm. France. Oh, that's for the, the globe upstairs. Ha ha ha! Okay, so how else? What else? How else? What's here? Okay. Oh, this is where we were before. Brilliant. All right. Well, have we... Oh! Okay. Oh, we're on a... We're on a boat. a little weird. Do we need to go back into his office? Is that what it is? We need to go back in there. Doesn't look like there's anything else for us to get, is there? How weird! Strange, uh, strange little box. All right. Well, we have the key, the first floor, which is good. We also have that key for Grace's float thing and Grace's drawing. Oh, so we'll go and uh, put those in and see what we can find out. First floor corridor key. That would be here, wouldn't it? First floor hall key. Excuse me. God. Okay. No, no. What is he saying? Go in there. Um, I'm going to go up to Grace's room first. Let's do the nice things first. <laughs> what is his deal? What is his beef? Clearly got some kind of problem, hasn't he? Well... Okay, so... There's something missing. Yes, there is. France! Hey, hey, hey! What have we found here? Oh, some more booze and... A map of the Caribbean! There's a lanyard. Brilliant! Alright, and then we'll put Grace's drawing back for... Her, as we have it now. Oh. Okay, I thought we'd, we'd be able to put her drawing back for her, but never mind. Whatever, whatever. Or should we put it in... Cassandra? I just don't understand why it's still showing me these. These seem a little bit bizarre. But all right. Well, we'll go back down and go and see what that awful man wants in that corridor. <laughs> okay, well. What's in here? Surprisingly neat. Maybe I've been selling that old barfly short. What's this? Oh. A whole heap of nothing. 
Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Hmm. Guess we need some kind of screwdriver to get in there, though. Ha. Ah. Moment of clarity. Sometimes. I think this place makes me worse. That Dossetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. There's something about Dossetto. Something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better. When in fact we are here to be forgotten. Oh dear. Okay, else? No. Over here? No. Hmm. So we need to get a screwdriver to get in there. That's fine. Okay, so the dark man wanted us to go in there, I think. Or was it the room at the end? I think it was the room at the end, actually. Load. Hmm. That's a curious place to put a camera, isn't it? Apparently there's nothing in it though, which is fine. Hey, hey. Uh -huh. It's just a... Uh... Door just open on its own. Or were these already open? I can't take this much more. This has to end. This Jangling shaker. So then, yep. Okay. Ooh. Thing in there. Lots of money and not a fat lot else. What a strange location. It's like have we gone back in time or something? Oh anything on the stage before we ah yes look bullets always take bullets always useful okay stairwell key aha We just didn't check that other room, did we? We must go and do that. Ugh. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? Some kind of old hospital wing or something? Scapegoat. Another lanyard. Brilliant. Radiography notes. Radiography. Patient Jeremy Hartwood. Date June 14, 1930. Plates. Jeremy's skull proved difficult to capture properly. Partial radiographs worked best. A complete picture of the brain can be assembled by piecing three plates together. Okay. Observations. Even when looking at an assembled version, a shadow covers significant parts of Jeremy's brain. Possible tumour, but more likely that the equipment is failing. 
Jeremy reacted strongly to the pictures and claimed to see a giant clay worm eating and displacing his memories. Notes. While this exercise has left me nowhere closer to an answer, I feel confident that a Burkhart lobotomy should sever all necessary parts. Oh, God. Not a lobotomy. Oh my god. Jeremy has lost it. If all else fails, I feel a bit uncomfortable about the picture. Hypothetical psychosurgery based on the ideas by Burkhart and the St. Petersburg research could end up saving Jeremy's mind. Severing the connections around the frontal lobe would certainly solve most mental afflictions. The procedure would be brutal in performance as well as in efficiency. An ice pick oh. pushed through the edge of the eye and into the skull would untether the nerves like Alexander cutting the Gordian knot. As this would likely leave Jeremy in a very different condition, all other paths should first be explored. The medical instrument I would need for this lobotomy is missing and I should have Waits order a new one. Well, that's uncomfortable, isn't it? Radiograph number two. Okay. Surgery room key. Is this the power or something? What is this? Electrical fuse. Aha! -ha! Good God. Okay, so I assume we need to find maybe another fuse or something? Yeah, I think we do. A thousand young, what is that? Oh, it's locked. Just thought, got a torch, what am I doing? Oof. Earth. Radiograph number one. We have to put three of them together, don't we? Confused, brilliant. Don't mind if I do. So that was a recording. How odd. My goodness. Okay. So, okay, um, that flips those two, and then what does four do? Four flips three. There you go. That's better. Okay, let's turn that off and have a look. So we want to put that up and that up. So we need to put them together, don't we? There we go. What is that? Jeremy's darkness. Key item. Okay. Ooh, that's a little weird. So what do we do with this now? Can we take it somewhere? Do something with it?
Huh. Wait, what was that? Hmm. That's locked now as well. Also locked. So... Jeremy's Darkness. Statue piece. Statue piece? What the hell? <gasps> there's what? What? There's water now? Why does this keep happening? What Eddie, am I supposed to do? Run up the stairs and get away from the water, you fool. Jeez Louise. Oh. Good God. Oh, this is tight. I'm not a fan of this. How do we... We go like this. Okay. Eddie, please go. There you go. So... Oh. What? Okay, oh, alright. Excuse me. And we're back here. Perfect time to have a look around this place. Ooh, rats. Yuck. Stinky. Oh, my god. That was a little bit, um. Weird. Scary. Whoa. Is that another safe? Possibly. Ooh. Well. Do you know what, folks? We are going to leave it there for today. Next time, we will open this box that's in front of us, have a little route round in this attic, and see what else we can find. So until next time, be safe, be good, and look after yourselves.